hurricane, a tidal wave. Essence perfect, life looks brilliant, gives me more of this. I'm out of control, about to blow, and I've been caught in the undertow. So toxic, but I can't get enough. You bury me, bury me. You're going to see not once, not twice, not three times, four times this week. We are going to be so sick of each other by the end of Sunday night. <laughs> then we're back again Tuesday night. Yeah, it's going to be a long week. Me and Astrid decided to really go hog wild for NXT this week. We don't know why, but we did. <laughs> so. We're here. This is Talking Takeover. It's the same set, different feature. We're going back to February 11th, 2015. We are 46 days away from WrestleMania in San Francisco, which I believe makes that WrestleMania, I want to say 32 or 31. I think so. Mm-hmm. I think it's 32. It's the heights of the century. It's Randy Orton, Seth Rollins. It's Triple H as the Terminator. It's the it's Triple H versus Sting, if I remember correctly, at this pay per view. Like this is this is a WrestleMania. <laughs> There's a whole lot of a WrestleMania about this WrestleMania, but we're not quite there yet. We're 46 days away. We're here at NXT Takeover Rival. In the weeks since the last time we've been here, Sami Zayn is celebrating his championship reign. Kevin Owens has put a damper on that because Kevin Owens has announced that he is a prized fighter. And Sami Zayn has said, I don't want to face anybody unless it's that bastard Kevin Owens. And Kevin mm-hmm. Owens is like, well, I'm not going to fight Sami Zayn unless there's a prize in the line because I'm, I'm here for checks and championships, as Booker T would say. And so we're live at a sticky wicket for Mr. William Regal. He has to decide what to do. So he gives Sami Zayn what he wants, which in turn gives Kevin Owens what he wants. In the main event, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Good friends, better enemies. In your house, number three. Um, no, this is this is the main event of the show. Meanwhile, we were having a number one contenders match on this show, which started with a tournament that had taken place over the weeks before, which led to Hideo Itami taking on Tyler Breeze on this show. It also led to Bull Dempsey versus Baron Corbin on this show. That tournament really did the heavy lifting for NXT on this show, let me tell you. We also have the one and only time, not Ricochet, but the one and only Fatal 4-Way Horsewomen's match. Yes, Ricochet is no longer a WWE thing. We don't have to worry about it. Trevor Mann is not here tonight, nor is he on Raw, nor will he probably be on Dynamite. Who knows? But the Fatal 4-Way for the four horsewomen, the only time it ever happened on television. And or pay-per-view. Charlotte Flair defends against Sasha, Becky, and Bailey. And of course, we have one new team that we have to talk about because of course the tag team division is never the same when we go take over to take over. And boy, is there some interesting stuff to talk about when we get to the lead up to that match. 
because it's a team you might be familiar with, but you're probably not familiar with the parts as they're put together. But of course, we start where NXT started. We start, of course, with Hideo Itami taking on Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze is now complete. The evolution of Breeze is complete. He now has the music. He has the outfits. He now has the selfie stick. We are full Tyler Breeze now. Um, what? Feels good. Yes. Oh, it feels good to see Tyler Breeze in, in, in his own. This was a first round matchup in the tournament, the four seed and the five seed in this tournament. Other people in this tournament were Curtis Axel, Tyson Kidd, and then the other ones we'll talk about because they're all fighting on this show. Three of the six <laughs> people in this tournament are fighting on the show, and the others are Tyson Kidd and Curtis Axel. This just reminds me when, uh, sorry. Uh, oh, when oh. NXT does the, you know, the Battle Royals, how we do every time they, the last couple of people end up in a storyline somehow. This is what it reminds me of. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was going to say is NXT living up to a tradition. Sorry. It's getting a little warm in here. I turned on the air conditioner. It's also lives up to NXT's long history of tournaments that don't really know what they want to do. In the first round, Finn Balor defeats Curtis Axel in four minutes and 55 seconds. Hideo Itami defeats Tyler Breeze in 12 minutes and 55 seconds. Wow. <laughs> Tyson Kidd is defeated by Adrian Neville in 12 minutes and 45 seconds. And Baron Corbin defeated Bull Dempsey in one minute and 32 seconds. <laughs> And if you thought that those times don't make sense, in the second round, one match took 12 minutes and three seconds, and the other match took five minutes and 28 seconds. It's as if they had women in this based on those match times. <laughs> Feels that way. But no, Hideo Itami defeated Tyler Breeze in the first round. Tyler Breeze then yells at Hideo Itami because Hideo Itami then loses in his second round match and breeze blames him for blowing the opportunity because breeze would have beat that man again we'll talk about him later what did you think of tyler breeze versus hideo top i enjoyed it and i wanted to point out was that fan that was kissing it was that supposed to be Liv morgan when she it was is uh, indeed during I was his see Liv morgan yep making yep. her wwe debut Liv morgan yeah. Kissing yep, men like, who don't want to be kissed. It's a story as old as time with that <laughs> young bitch. <laughs> That's all I can oh, think man. about. That's all I can think about once I saw it. I was like, wait, was that her? And I went back and I feel like I squinted. I was like, it does look like her. A very baby Liv Morgan. <laughs> when she had her snapback and everything. And she was just a like a competitor against Evil Marie, I think it was. So, yeah, we go back to those times. So, I, that's the first thing I noticed. It definitely caught my attention. Uh, again, this match though, I just I wish it would have lasted a little bit longer. I feel like I was enjoying it, and then it just ended. One of my favorite parts though was uh, Tyler doing that like cannot figure four leg lock submission on the post. I love when people like Gil Kim does that pretty often. I was like, I enjoy it every time she did it. So I love seeing that. But again, especially at this time, it's no surprise that with Hideo signing and Balor being here, Hideo ends up winning a, a, with the momentum that he has after him debuting. So it's it's not surprising me that he won the match itself, but again, like you said, it's, I love seeing like full on Tyler Breeze the way he is now because that's my favorite Tyler Breeze like that. And we can see right here there is blonde haired yeah. Liv Morgan being the same old assaulting self that she ever is. And if you want to see more of her assaulting men who don't want her attention, watch Monday Night Raw. You'll see plenty of it. Anyways, I love this match. I, 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 it's eight minutes and 13 seconds of just greatness. Um, Tyler Breeze is entirely underrated. Uh, Kenta, Hideo Itami, whatever you want to call him, is sensational. Uh, they have, ironically, really good chemistry. The match mm -hmm. flows. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like eight minutes, 
it feels a lot shorter. Like you said, it feels like it needs more time. But when I look at the time, I'm like, no, eight minutes is good. It's an opening match. It doesn't need a whole lot more. Remember, takeovers at this point are hard two-hour shows. Yeah. So you don't get a lot of time on these shows. And, and trust me, when we go through these match times, you'll see that. But no, um, building Hideo Itami, Tyler Breeze at this point is kind of bulletproof. He can lose whenever he wants, but he feels like a main eventer. He feels like he belongs. So anytime they want to put him there, they can. And you know that they trust him because in a few short months, when we get to NXT Brooklyn 1, I believe, Tyler Breeze is going to have the opportunity that every member of the NXT male roster wanted to have, and that honor went to Tyler Breeze. If you don't know what that honor is, he has the one and only official WWE match with one of the greatest Japanese wrestlers of all time, Jushin Thunder Liger. Jushin Liger comes to one NXT takeover, and they give him Tyler Breeze. It didn't make sense then, but it makes sense now how much they adored Tyler at that time. But no, this is a real fun match. Um, Hideo wins it with a running knee. They call it a kick, but it's obviously a running knee. Um, they're probably trying to stay away from that because we do have Daniel Bryan at this point on the main roster. Not not quite Daniel Bryan that we know and love, yeah. but he's pretty close at this point. If it's WrestleMania 30. No, it is. It is Daniel Bryan we know and love because this is post-WrestleMania 30. It's all takeovers are post-WrestleMania 30. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so... Uh, but no, I, I thought this was a great match. We move on to the second first round match that ended up becoming another storyline. Baron Corbin and Bull Dempsey in a no disqualification match that at the end of the day involved nothing that would have been a disqualification. Because the chair that they introduce in the match never actually gets used. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, like all Baron Corbin matches this early in his career, four minutes and 15 seconds for a no disqualification match. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this one. Because I love Baron Corbin. And I think he did a lot of good stuff here. The problem is Bull Dempsey's there. <laughs> Dang. Plus, they, they wanted good things for Bull Dempsey. Go ahead. You were saying oh, that. yeah. Uh, I was just thinking, it was like, when you think of like no DQ type of matches, I feel like sometimes it takes a little bit more time to get into that sort of environment. So it's like four minutes, it feels like the warm up kind of part, I guess, if you want to call it, of the match before you really get into like the no DQ aspect of it. So you're still like kind of in the warm waters of it. So when you think about it, even at this point when I was watching, I forgot it was an ODQ match because I was thinking the chair got introduced. I was thinking this is just Bull being. Uh, a heel, he's going to use it, and then Baron being a face, like, no, I'm going to use it, defeat you, and then I'm going to sit basically almost next to you to show you that I didn't do the chair to defeat you, but again, in no way, shape, or form, did no DQ cross off my mind because I was, I, I forgot that happened, and the match didn't help either because it just, like, the flow of it didn't give you no DQ vibes. It was just the beginning of it, and it was done, but again, like you said, it just, it's two things. It's like having an ODQ match, but it's also a Baron Corbin match. We know that those are not going to be that long. So it's like, why would you put him in an ODQ match when it's not going to even get to that point? I think if they were going to do that, it should have gone right to the rails right away. Yeah. Um, by the way, Dave Meltzer agrees with us that this wasn't much of a match. 1.75 stars for Book Dempsey versus Baron Corbin. Ironically, he doesn't necessarily agree with us when it comes to Dave with Tommy and Tyler Breeze. We both enjoyed that match. Dave gets it 2.75. Dave didn't like it. Speaking of things that Dave didn't like, our next match. Sin Cara and Kalisto are no longer our tag team champions. On NXT television two weeks ago, an upstart young team of checks notes, Wesley Blake and Buddy Murphy. Yes, yes. Buddy Murphy and Wesley Blake 
are the new NXT Tag Team Champions after a surprise victory over the Lucha Dragons on NXT television. You'll know both of these men, one for heartbreaking reasons, one for breaking people's hearts. Well, obviously, we'll go to Buddy Murphy. Buddy Murphy, AEW superstar, just got married to Rhea Ripley. Congratulations to you, my sir. Um, that's that's a hell of a catch. Also dated Alexa Bliss. Don't know what he's got going on, but obviously he has the, as the kids say, the Riz. Oh, God, that felt wrong coming out of my mouth, and that's going to be a clip. Oh, God. And even for wrong watching it, too. <laughs> We also have Weston Blake. And if you want to know about heartbreak, this this poor man is full of heartbreak. Mm -hmm. So he gets in a tag team with a wonderful tag team partner. They break up before they go to the main roster. Buddy Murphy goes out on his own. And Wesley Blake's left stumbling, fumbling, trying to find somebody. He ends up finding Steve Cutler. Yay! And they form a tag team. And, and, and we, we here like Steve Cutler. We both love yeah. the work he's doing. In, in TNA, we think that he should have had the title long before he did. And he was doing some great work over there when you were watched, when you were making an impact on your own YouTube channel. He met a wonderful woman named Sarah. I can't remember what her last name was, but I know she's the runner up on NXT, on the NXT fied version of Tough Enough. This is the one with Stone Cold, Booker T, and Trish. If I remember correctly. It's that first season. It was... It's the one with Amanda who ends up becoming Mandy Rose. It's mm -hmm. the one with Sonia who ends up becoming Sonia Deville. It's chock full of people. Chelsea who Green. You know now. Chelsea Green is on that season as well. Yes. All kinds of fantastic people on that season. But the runner up is this wonderful, innocent young lady named Sarah who falls in love with Wesley Blake and they have some kids and they're having a good life. And she never does anything in the wrestling world. And unfortunately over the past, well, I want to say year, year or two ago, she unfortunately lost her battle and she passed away. So now Wesley is picking up the, the pieces of his life and hopefully he's doing well. I, I know at one point he was working for WWE as a producer backstage. I don't know if he currently still is, but I know he was. Sarah Lee, thank you very much, Astrid. I greatly appreciate that. After forming a tag team with Steve Cutler, they get forced into a tag team with Jackson Riker, which is another unfortunate part of this man's career. And they become the Forgotten Sons. They were going to get a push against the New Day until Jackson Riker opened his mouth and said a whole bunch of things that didn't need to be said. And Wesley Blake ended up off TV, and Steve Cutler ended up off TV, and somehow Jackson Riker got a push. How in the fuck that happens, I still don't know. <laughs> and Blake left the, the scene. But Blake and Murphy, they have the early days of it now. They're still brand new. In a few months, we'll be talking about them with their third and the piece that makes them the perfect tag team, Alexa Bliss. When the Pixie Princess Alexa Bliss returns, because she's currently not on television right now, she will return with Blake and Murphy. What did you think of Blake and Murphy versus Kalisto and Sankara after I've gone on a little bit of a <laughs> long tirade there? No, it reminds me how much I really enjoyed Blake and Murphy together and how Alexa just added you know, that little that sprinkle in there as well to the team. And it just reminds me again of what I, I've said this in the past year of like thinking of the groups and how the women are the ones that end up like surviving it. If you think about it, because we have her, the one that really stood up within the group that's still there in the company. Same thing with Carmela there. So it's always interesting when I think about because I never, it never crossed my mind that she would be joining them. And then when she joined them, I was like, no, this is something cool, nice and different for her. And it, I feel like that was that gave out that little preview of what she was like as a heel and i really enjoyed her work with them as well and again this is one of my favorite teams too i love like if people that know me i love my fast paced kind of high flyer style and then they do that very often they do that very well with uh, with the uh, lucha 
here so it was like with the lucha dragon so it's like once i saw that the match started i was like this is definitely gonna be one of my favorite matches and it really was it's like i love the fast pace of it the double team moves they do with each other is like they have such a great chemistry here uh but again also like no it's no surprise that blake and murphy also retain the titles here uh, I really thought this was the moment when Alexa joined them, and then I, I went by based on what was happening. I figured out that, that it's happening sometime later. But again, it's like they do great work together, and it made me think of what you said the part that we don't have Blake in there in wrestling in any way, shape, or form. We have Buddy in the in AEW, maybe on his way to WWE. People think about it that way if he returns, but. Again, he's one of those like I I enjoy what he does no matter what. It's like you no, know, if whether it was an NXT in the main roster doing this or even now what he's doing AEW, I feel like he's doing great. So very happy that he's still as, as still active as a wrestler though. Yeah, um, Blake and Murphy are fantastic. Um, we're starting to get into with, with the downfall of the Lucha Dragon. We're going to start seeing Triple H build the Infinity Gauntlet of tag teams here. This is the beginning of that catalyst that becomes the NXT Tag Team Division. We're going to see American Alpha in the near future. We're going to see um, the revival in the near future. You know, we're going to see Johnny Gargano and, and Tommaso Ciampa in, in a, a little longer than that. But we're going to see them too. Blake and Murphy are the beginning of that transition. From the early days of NXT to what will be coming. This match is fine. Like, it's not bad. It's not great. It's a good match. I love the inventive finish of Kalisto setting up for the Selena Del Sol. They make the blind tag. They let him hit the Selena Del Sol. And then they just pull him back, wrap him up, and just pin him to the ground as hard as they can. One, two, three. They get the win. I thought that was great. Eight minutes, ten seconds. Dave Meltzer disagrees. Dave Meltzer gave this the worst rating of the night. 1.5 stars. Fuck you, Meltzer. <sighs> it won't be the last time I tell you that tonight. Well. Yeah, 1.5 stars for Murphy and Blake and Murphy versus Kalisto and Sin Cara. <laughs> Less than the four-minute no disqualification match that had nothing that would be a disqualification. <laughs> By the way, on the call for this show, as we get ready to move into our next match, we have Rich Brennan, joined by Corey Graves, who's now an official commentator for NXT as of the last pay-per-view. And the rotating cast continues to rotate as tonight we get A-Train. We get Prince Albert. Jason Alberts is on the commentary table. And by the way, this is my favorite version of the early days of NXT um, when it comes to uh, commentary teams. Rich Brennan is such a great straight man to Corey Graves trying to figure things out, to Jason Albert being the person who knows these talents the best because he's at this time the head trainer of the Performance Center. So he sees these people week in and week out. I love this team as a combination. They're not as entertaining as we're going to get when we get to Mono, uh, Mauro Ronaldo and Nigel McGuinness. They're not as entertaining as when we get to um, Beth Phoenix and Stu Bennett and Vic Joseph. Um, but this is a really fun announced team that I really enjoy. And I think Rich Brennan doesn't get enough credit for the hard and good work he does, especially in these early days. My other tag team partner and Lola Vice's number one fan, Andre C, comes in and says, the VOD villains are the peak of the NXT tag team champions. Just kidding. You say that. <laughs> NXT VOD villains is part of that group. We've already seen them, so I didn't quite mention them. But they're going to be part of this NXT tag team revolution that we're about to start seeing. And the VOD villains are a big part of that. They were hot in NXT. There were a lot of things that worked really well in NXT that never worked on the main roster. And I think that's a, there's, that's a difference because NXT is so relatable to independent professional wrestling. There are so many things that can work in Florida in that small atmosphere. 
I believe this is the last or this this is the second to last show that we're going to get at Full Sail University when it comes to uh, NXT takeovers before they start going on the road for almost permanently at this point. <coughs> think. Yeah. Not quite sure if I'm right on that, but I think I'm right on that, so we'll go with it. <laughs> Meanwhile, we now have we now have the finals for the number one contender. So yes, in four matches, we have three matches that were made up from this number one contenders tournament. <coughs> Finn Balor as the demon defeats Adrian Neville in 13 minutes, 25 seconds. I love this match. I think this match is great. Mm -hmm. Um, I remembering back, I'm like, I think Finn Balor wins this. I'm almost certain Finn Balor wins this, but I'm like, no, it feels like something Adrian Neville would have won. And mm -hmm. then you would have done Finn later because I'm like, KO holds this title for a bit. So I'm like, it's too early for Finn Balor to be getting championship mm -hmm. opportunities. I'm like, this sounds like a Neville wins, Neville takes on, you know, KO and then goes to the main roster after losing kind of thing. But no, he loses here to Finn Balor in a really fantastic match that doesn't get into the air until, I want to say, nine, ten minutes into this match. Even though they keep saying, the first person to the air is probably going to win this and then nine minutes spent doing technical mat wrestling. <laughs> which completely bamboozles all three announcers for some odd reason. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it just, especially this match for me, though, it makes me realize how much I miss Balor as a singles competitor. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Judgment Day. I love the group and I love what they're doing. But I miss him having that theme song that gives you goosebumps whenever you see him, whether he's like himself or as a demon. And seeing just like, not only that, the movie and the way he does it with the crowd, like, it just reminds, reminds me of all the video packages whenever he would do it and they would show shots of the crowd doing it. And I just miss that type of vibe that he would give us. Because obviously now if you're just like, I don't want to say he's not as serious as he was around that time. And it just reminds me of that because I, I, I also think about the moment that I first saw him in NXT there too. It was when Hideo first introduced him. It was like, once I saw that it says Prince Devitt, I was like, oh, I remember my brother telling me about him. And just like, I, I got those goops bumped. And it just, I, I miss this kind of vibe that Balor used to give me. And we don't get that with Judgment Day now. And I just miss him being by himself and shining by himself. And it just reminded me of that. And I, no lie, I was trying to like rush over the show so I can take my notes. So I was skipping over every other video package entrance. This is the only entrance that I watched during this whole show <laughs> because I missed it. The only one. Every other entrance, I was like, nah, I, I, I'll, I'll go into the introductions and I can forward it into the couple of seconds there. But this is the only one that I watched in its entirety because I was thinking, not only do I miss this Renshaw or Balor, just like, being like so so like fearless to put it like that and he gives us such a vibe that just like nobody really matches up to the vibe he, to, that he gives us so i really miss that aspect of it and again it's like i was thinking i was like you like debating i was like does neville win this so you know does Balor win it but at the same time i was thinking of timeline wise like i always say is like we go by like kind of like seasons and to me this was the end like towards the end of neville season so I was thinking, oh, this is when Balor has to win because Neville's was almost on his way out at this point. And if you notice it, because when he wins, people start chanting, thank, thank you, Neville, because they know this, you know, more towards the end of his time in NXT, which is just interesting to think about when you have how they cross paths so little before Neville left. So again, this was an, uh, another match that I feel like it was just incredible. I really enjoyed this from beginning to end. I didn't even have any notes because I was just like watching. And I was like, I miss both of them like this because we do have Neville in AWS Park, but we haven't seen him as much as we saw him in NXT based on what it's been like in AW so far. So I do miss seeing him being the high flyer stuff that he is and like this is exactly the person that I miss seeing on my TV. So hoping we get that more from that in, in AW because I do, do just miss seeing him all together. Dave Meltzer agree with both of us. This is a great match. 4.25 stars from the Dave Meltzer on this one. Oh. You got to remember, Finn Balor is a Japanese wrestler. He loves him. He wrestled <laughs> in Japan, so it instantly gets a star and a half more. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, we then get to the Fatal 4-Way. Sasha oh. Banks, Bailey, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair. The missed opportunities of the four of these 
because WWE thought they'd have them all forever. WWE went ahead and just kind of did it here, and they're and they never quite had the right moment to do the match again. Mostly because they built the match to have with the four horsewomen of MMA and Jessamyn Duke and Marina Shafir never came up to snuff. So they couldn't do the match. But as we all know, WWE has, and, and everybody that's been backstage in that time period has told us, there were multiple plans for the Fatal 4-Way, with the, 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 the eight-person tag to have all of them in there. Astrid, what did it mean to you to see these four women at the top of the NXT card here? Uh, Becky Lynch in a version of what we'll know and love. Well, most people love. I still loathe. But uh, Becky Lynch is almost completely Becky Lynch that we'll see in the main roster. What do you think of the Fatal 4-Way? It just made me think how bittersweet it is that I would have loved to see this as a main event at WrestleMania. It's like that's one of like my dream matches. Then you never know what the future holds, but it's just kind of bittersweet to think about that it's not going to be happening anytime soon. <laughs> but it just also thinking about the match itself, I enjoyed it. And I think about like this is just them still like babies. If you think about it that way, this is not to the full potential. So imagine if you have fun watching this and you imagine what it would be like now, for example, where they have so much more experience. And there's, they know why they're doing a lot more than what they were at that time and the experience they had. So I think about it as like, I enjoyed it here. Imagine how much more I'm going to enjoy it now, especially if you think about who they are now as people. But again, it's like, there's so many like little things here. The fact that we get Sasha and Becky still teaming up with each other, even though Becky did like cost Sasha at the time, the championship match, but they team up for just a moment until they had to pin Bailey. And there's that moment that they start fighting with each other and they do have that back and forth there. And even from the beginning, you do see Bailey staring at Charlotte in a certain way and being more vicious towards Charlotte than the other girls too. She's like, as Charlotte's doing her entrance, she's like staring at her as she's walk, like entering the ring, kind of like, you're my target. And she has that moment in there that she, you can kind of see a little bit of the shades of what it's like when she gets a little bit more vicious too. And it's weird to see a Bailey being like that there. But it's also something very, it's it's surprising, but also very well done. We don't get that side of Bailey very often when she's the hugger. And I love seeing that from there. It, Again, it's like I enjoyed this match. I, especially the ending, it just makes me laugh how we have Becky and Bailey on the on the outside. And Sasha's doing the submission on Charlotte, and she takes that moment and she literally takes off the submission. She kicks out Becky, who hits Bailey, and it goes back to doing the submission because she wants to defeat uh, Charlotte, not the other two. Charlotte, it's like Charlotte's the one I want to defeat. And I like how they had that moment that even though they have it out, they do shove each other after the after the match. But it just like it gives you the vibes of what it was like for them as a team too. But again, I I enjoyed everything from all the ladies here, and it's like it just makes me think of like what it could be if we had it now, because it just it will be different in such a good way. It will be so much better than this was, and it's kind of incredible. Think about like all these years in WWE, if you only seen them have this four way once. I just I can't believe that. There's something special special about Bailey at this time. The next two or three pay-per-view cycles. So Rival, Unstoppable, Brooklyn, Respect, and London. That's that's the Bailey run. Mm -hmm. It starts here with I get a little bit more vicious, but I don't win the championship. Unstoppable, I believe, is it's not Bailey. I believe that, that one's Becky. I believe it's Becky versus Sasha there. Brooklyn One is the the, the first women's main event where Bailey and Sasha main event take over. Co main event. WWE claims they main evented, but I don't think they went on last but they touted it as a main event. And then if I remember correctly, Respect is the is the uh, Iron Women's match mm -hmm. that everybody talks about as being one of... And both, Brooklyn One and Respect are the best, and still to this day, the best women's matches that NXT's ever put on. And it's because it's Sasha Bailey. And there's a special something between... 
just like Becky and Charlotte bring out the best out of each other, yeah. Becky, Sasha, and Bailey do the same thing. And in this match, we start to see that, but they purposely keep them apart mm -hmm. for a reason. And I think that's to set that up. Um, the thing that, that Sasha does that, that makes me remember how vicious child Sasha can be. She sets up Becky on the top rope, on the middle rope. Mm -hmm. And then she sets up Charlotte on the bottom rope and does that springboard bounce up knee through the stomach to both of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you talked about the finish. The finish is... Mm -hmm. It's... It's the reason why, like I said on the on the pre-show for Forbidden Door, I have no respect for the person that portrays Sasha Banks. I've had multiple bad run-ins with them in person before they got to NXT. The person you see on television is not far from the person in real life that I've come to see. Um, it's not been a good time, but... The thing I will never take away from her is she is one of the most reckless but best women's wrestlers in the world. When she's ready. I say that because Forbidden Door was last night and the one thing that everybody seems to agree upon is Stephanie Vaquer was the better wrestler last night even though she didn't win the match. I love this four-way. It is so well built. It is so well done with making sure to isolate Charlotte for large portions of the match to make you think she's going to win. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then putting on the bank statement before it's really called the bank statement. Mm -hmm. They're still calling it a crossface at this point. And then, like you said, she gets up. She kicks Becky off the ring apron who falls into Bailey, goes back to the bank statement, and then rolls it cover with the crucifix cover. Just such a good, well-done job to get Sasha the win, to make sure that everybody knew that this was who was going to run with our ball. Not knowing Vince McMahon was going to change those plans in the near future, because not long after this, Becky, Sasha, and Charlotte will all debut on the main roster in different teams as part of the women's evolution where WWE created women. <clears throat> if you don't believe me, just watch any video package about women's wrestling from WWE. They show you next to nothing before a page is out there and we have the women's evolution thing where Stephanie McMahon comes walking out and introduces Paige to her new her new friends, Charlotte and Becky, to form Team PCB. Team PCB was because they couldn't use the team name they wanted to use, which is Submission Sorority. If you don't know why that's a bad idea, just search it on Google and let me know how you found out. No, don't Google it. <laughs> and then Sasha Banks joins Team Bad with Naomi and... Um, Tamina. Tamina. And they have the Street Profits music to the letter. They don't even change the words of the song. It is the exact same song for both groups. Um, but no, this, this is a watershed moment for NXT. This is the end of Charlotte and NXT and the beginning of this Bailey sasha era that brings women's wrestling to the forefront um of nxt um and it's just such a great run all the way through this because through this we're going to get to the early days of nia Jax. through this we're going to move to the oscar reign and once oscar gets here the women's division if it can possibly levels up again with with the with the, the addition of oscar but it all starts here. It all starts at Rival with this wonderful Fatal 4-Way. Should have been five stars in my opinion. I really think this is the perfect Fatal 4-Way for women's wrestling. However, Dave Meltzer does indeed hate women. Four stars. Less stars. At least more to have. 
Finn Balor and Adrian Neville is 4.25, but this Fatal 4 weighs 4 stars. And another thing that you pointed out, too, and this is something that I, I thought about before while watching this, too, when you think about the pairs of friends, they're the ones that really go the hardest with each other. Like, if you think about Bailey and Sasha and Becky with Charlotte and even, like, Champa with Gargano and Kayla with Sammy, when you think about it, it's like the best friends, they really have no mercy with each other to the point that they give you the greatest matches because they're really hard hitting with each other, even as best friends. So you kind of see shades of that going on, and even in this match here, and as we do with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, it's like I, I, for some reason, they always go the hardest with each other, and I love seeing that too. There's actually a reason for this. I've talked to professional, uh, independent professional wrestlers about uh, the 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 chemistry and how that works. Mm -hmm. It all comes down to trust, believe it or not. The level of friendships that these people have, they have such a trust in one another that they know no matter what the other person's going to do, they trust that the other person's going to keep them safe through it all. And that's why some of Charlotte's best matches are with Becky. That's why Becky's best matches are always with Charlotte. That's why Sasha and Bailey always have great matches together. Mm -hmm. That's why Ao and Sammy have great matches together. Gargano and Champa. The reason is there's nothing off limits when you trust the person so much as these people do with each other. Speaking of trust and friendship, that's out the window as Kevin Owens takes on Sammy <laughs> Zayn in the main event of this show. By the way, the women's match. 12 minutes and 28 seconds. Not quite as long as the as the men's number one contenders match. But let's be honest. The women getting almost the same amount of time as the second longest match in the card is a step up already. Yeah. It's already a step up. They're doing fantastic work. And the, the final three matches are the only three matches that get double digits in minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's why Baron Corbin and Bull Dempsey get four minutes. It's why Hideo Itami and Tyler Breeze get eight minutes. It's why Hide uh, the tag team match gets eight minutes and ten seconds. Those matches get their time cut because we have to give the time to these other people who need it more. Yeah. I don't know if Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn needed 23 minutes and 27 seconds, but I enjoyed every single moment of this. It's a lot easier to watch now than it was to watch then. Sami Zayn has about a five-minute spurt in this match where Sami looks great. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Sami's getting absolutely destroyed by Kevin Owens. Yep. <laughs> Just mercilessly destroying his best friend. The person who he's run up and down the roads with. The video package is so great because it, it ex Kevin explains it so great. We were here everywhere that Sammy talks about where he went. I was right there by his side. I was there with him. Every, every trip, we made those trips together. We were doing this together. But he got the call first. He left me behind. He, we could have done this together, but he chose to do it on his own. So when I came here, I chose to do it for myself, for my family. Because Sammy only has to think about himself. I have to think about my wife. I have to think about my kids. And Sammy Zayn says, I got the call first because... I didn't have to take time off when I got married. I didn't have to take time off when my son was born. I was there doing it, and WWE came a call. I love that that's part of the setup, that this real interper interpersonal friendship comes down to literally Kevin chose to have a family, and Sammy chose to wait a little bit longer. <clears throat> Kevin Owens' son is now like six foot four five he's bigger than ko he's bigger than sammy he's potentially training to be a professional wrestler no. owen owens might be a professional wrestler that's crazy yeah, he's named after the one and only owen hart 
because it's one of one of Kevin Owens' um, idols growing up. But God, this match gets dangerously just. Oh. <laughs> Kevin just doesn't stop to accelerate her down. Everything he can do to Sammy's head, he's doing it. Sammy's out of it. At one point, he does a pop-up power bomb. And he waits for the ref to say he's going to call a match. And the ref don't call the match. So Kevin goes down to cover him. And it's one, two. And then Sammy just kind of does this. It's a kick out. And, and, and Graves is perfect on the call. He's like, no, Sammy didn't kick out. Sammy, Sammy instinctively got his shoulders off the mat because he knows how long three seconds is. But at the end of the day, Kevin hits him with one pop-up power bomb too many. The doctors are out there. The trainers are out there. The referee calls for the stop. For the first time in NXT history, and I think one of the only times in NXT history, by technical knockout, Kevin Owens defeats Sami Zayn and is the new NXT champion. I thought this was great. I, I love this match. It's hard to watch sometimes. <laughs> I feel like it was done really well. It Kevin's been here two months to the day. <laughs> two months to the day, Kevin Owens has been part of NXT on television. And he's now the champion. And it don't look like he's going to lose that anytime soon. <laughs> hmm. What do you think? I think it's ironic because the pacing of this match, it makes it feel longer than what it actually is. It's another thing to it because it's so like, I want to say like methodical, I guess in a way, very calculated. We think about KO and the way he is with Sammy. And I like, we also get, a, even though we get most of KO and being in, like in control of the match, we do have that moment. It, is, it starts with, with Sammy trying to take advantage. KO takes that moment. Sammy takes his little like five minutes or so that he has to himself and he has a little bit of energy and then it goes back to KO and KO wins the match. I also thought it was uh, very, very kind of funny in the end because when he wins, we don't hear his team song right away. We don't hear the bells. So it's like this kind of silence and this is happening and you wait for that reaction from the crowd and it's silent. And then once the referee gives KO the championship and raises his hand, so people start cheering. I was like... At this time, especially, I would have been like, how dare you? Why are you cheering for Kevin Owens winning this way when our baby, you know, baby face, beloved Sami Zayn just lost? So I think it's very ironic when this is happening. And I like how when he when he does win, the people, they actually zoom into the big bro's faces when it was cheering for KO during this. And again, it's like, he's so hard hitting. This is, for me, this, I think this is the first time I did watch him like kind of like wrestle like this and have this type of match. And like you said, it's one of the very few times that we get a title change like this because if we get not something similar ish to Asuka and Bailey when Bailey passes out and Asuka wins the championship. But especially around this time, this doesn't happen in NXT. So it's very like, not only does it because it's KO and Sami as best friends, but it's very shocking to see like whatsoever in NXT seeing a uh, title change like this. And Again, it makes you think more of like Sammy is better when he's chasing chasing the championship than when he's actually champion. And this is what gets to more than anything in this match here. But again, it's like when I see KO doing this, it's like holy crap! Like, and this is the guy that literally goes and has the open challenge with John Cena on Raw as well. And it's like this is the guy, the prize fighter. And it's like it's just incredible to see. And even thinking about it in here because he he's just starting, he's a little bit chubby than what he is now. So at the same time, he doesn't look like the same person if you think about it later on. So it's just incredible to think about the transformation that he's had, you know, this the last couple of years in WWE. And then again, like you said, it's just a start. It's only two months into NXT and he's already I'm the champion and you know it's gonna take a while for me to lose this. And I love the style that you get within this match because we we get him in control most of the time. You see how vicious he is, even when Sammy's his best friend. It's like, if that's his best friend and he's treating him like this, can you imagine what he does to anybody else? No mercy. That's all I can think about. There's no mercy here. But again, these two just killed it with this match. It's like, again, this is another one that I had no notes for because I was just like watching it and hopefully nobody would interrupt me as I was watching it because I was so in the zone. And it just makes me realize like how much I love these two going against each other no matter how many times you see it because there's always something a little bit different with them 
yeah this this is this is fantastic and this will run the gauntlet all the way through because sammy's last match is dallas so sammy's got five takeovers left they run this back at unstoppable and then i think brooklyn one is the finn balor match i think that's the one where balor takes it i believe is uh brooklyn one the first time they go on the road but yeah no this this is this is everything it needed to be um this is brutal this is vicious however dave Meltzer disagrees what do you think dave Meltzer gave this match I'm gonna I'm gonna think with his mind. A two. No, three point five. That's surprising, but still low. <laughs> yeah, it's very low, surprising considering these guys. I do love how this audience is chanting Steen throughout the match. For those that don't know, Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen in ROH. Oh, ask ask our good friend Kyle about Kevin Steen in El Generico. <laughs> If you thought this was vicious, oh, what is it? a fight without honor? I believe is their ladder match that they have. They have a fight without honor ladder match, and it's oh, that one's something to behold. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of good stuff in their ROH library. So, I mean, I mean, I know El Generico and Sami Zayn are two different people, and you know, El Generico left to go help orphans at an orphanage and, and unfortunately perished in a fire, but you know, he looks an awful lot like the Sami Zayn guy and him and Kevin Steen were really good friends and Kevin Steen is Kevin Owen. So, yeah. you know, I, sometimes, uno. I sometimes get them confused. You know, Sami Zayn. I get it. You know. <laughs> but that's it for this show. Uh, other notes I had. Corey Graves can see the future. <laughs> I mentioned this to Astrid, and there's a moment where Baron Corbin wins, and he's sitting down, looking down at Bull Dempsey. And Corey Graves comes out with the line, All hail Baron Corbin. <laughs> and I'm like, Shit, he saw King Corbin before anybody else did. Hello. He saw the future. He saw King Corbin way before anybody else did. Um, yeah, this, this is a fantastic show. Um, Oh, I love these things, but they've, they've got to stop doing these tournaments to come up with number one contenders that end up having matches because it's no fun. The next time we'll be back, we'll be talking about May 20th, 2015. Unstoppable. Takeover Unstoppable. Uh, it is at Full Sail University. Let's see. Anything fun on the card? In, in in a in a in a match that was a dark match for this show, we had the mechanics taking on the VOD villains. I th I think we might see a little more of this mechanics people. Don't you think, yeah. Astrid? Probably. They might be around for a little while. Um, let's see. Oh, we get we get some more friends and fun that we haven't seen in a while here. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of people that are going to be uh, returning to NXT here. There's a lot of returns coming to NXT here from what I look at here. But that's for next time. Astrid, tell the people about our nice long week that we've got going on in the <laughs> I was going to say, where you can find me, but it's like, where you can find us this week. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, taking over again, following NXT, the go home show for NXT Heat. We're well, so very excited for that. And then we get, I keep forgetting the date. Okay, Saturday is when we, see, we premiere the pre show. So the preview to Heat Wave, which will be with Stephanie Hypes. So we're excited to be working with her. And then for a post show for Heat Wave, will be with, from the Ankle podcast, will be Joey Carney. So. Very excited to have two new guests uh, working with us this weekend. And then back again on Tuesday afterwards after we get everything past Heat Wave and hopefully the Julia debut because I really want to say that. 
Also, I've been forced because I've worked with him the last uh, the the last on Saturday and Sunday. I had to work with uh, my good friend and loving tag team partner Andre Sneed, and he'll be remiss if we don't say that he will be joining us on the post show to mm -hmm. cry tears of, of 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 pain and anguish for not seeing his favorite Lola Vice win the NXT Women's Championship. However, if you want to find me on the internet webs, you can find me on Twitter at edfries12584. You can find me on the Twitch at twitch.tv slash edfries2002. Yes, like Ash had said, we'll be doing all of those shows. I'll be doing none other. However, please make sure that you stop by here for all of your Money in the Bank coverage. We are going to have a fantastic panel of guests for our Money in the Bank post show. It's an ROH explosion on Money in the Bank. <laughs> We've got Auntie Collins, if she's well, joining us. We've got locked in, pretty locked in, Kimmy Sto Sokol locked in for this one, depending on whether or not she's away. She's very, very busy with all of her cons and things, but she believes she'll be available for it. And, of course, the Ole, you know, the Ole post-show man himself, Bobby Money Munson and Mark Talks Wrestling will be there too. We've got a whole bunch of fun going on there. Please make sure that you watch the other shows, whether it be Ring Respect Radio, Japanese Wrestling Update, Honor Ramble. Honor Ramble this week will be probably Auntie Collins, if she's feeling up to it. Pro prob definitely Kimmy Sokol. And then either one of Kyle, Auntie, or myself will be there on Thursday night to talk about things about Ring of Honor. So that'll be fun. So make sure you go ahead and check those out. Ring of Honor did massive numbers on Twitter this week. So hopefully some of you guys will come join us. Speaking of joining us, Astrid, can you bide me some time so I can find us somebody to raid? I know exactly yeah, well, what another thing, aside from the shows that you mentioned, will be please don't forget to follow, uh, to subscribe to us on YouTube. Click on that bell to be notified when we upload or go live. We're almost got content almost on a daily basis at this point. So definitely check that out. There's always something you're going to love, at least some pairing you're going to end up attaching to because that's what we all do. So I'll say, check it, check out anything that you can. We also have a lot of shorts that are very entertaining to watch. So please do so as well. So anything like that, we would love to see. Like you said, we do have a lot of people that are coming over to helping us out to do shows like Kimi. That is so very, Kimi is so cool as we like to call her. So Definitely support all these people that are doing this, and even somebody like Mark who's here very often, and Lauren who was here doing a forbidden door coverage all weekend. All those people, make sure to subscribe, and you know my, that way we can get them here more often. They can know that they're real loved by everybody here in our local establishment, as we say. You're watching OLE, and this is a DiJack hijack. DiJack's hijack doesn't mean it's time to go. I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye. You're never gonna look back. Cause damn, I was built to last You move slow when I move fast And that's fact Only I can make a change Slowly take a step today I will never be the same